We're now ready to talk about vectors. Vectors are the most important data structure in R. They are found all over the place. So a vector is a named object. We can think of it as a one-dimensional structure, something like a row of slots with a certain number of spaces where we can store things. The uh, critical feature of vectors is that they can only contain a single kind of data. So every slot that we put into a vector has to be the same kind of thing. In this example here, we have character strings. Those are in the slots. And we can refer to the slots within the vector by index numbers that we put into square brackets. So we put the name of the vector, square brackets, and then a number. And that's how we refer to uh, the which item in the sequence of items is found in the vector. One thing that you may notice if you're familiar with other programming languages such as Python, the index numbering starts with one in R. It does not start with zero as it is the case in some other zero-based indexing languages. So R is a one-based indexing language. So we simply number them the way that we would count them. The way that we can create a vector is with a function that we call the combined function. It's abbreviated as C. And we simply list the sequence of items that we want to combine together into the vector. So in the first example, I'm creating a vector that is uh, numeric by passing a sequence of numbers into the combined function. In this case, I'm passing a sequence of character strings into the combined function and I'm creating a character vector. So if you've loaded the R script for this lesson, we can go ahead and try creating some vectors. So recall that if you want to uh, run a single line in a script, all you have to do is put the cursor anywhere on that line. So I just clicked on that line and I can click on the run button. And when I do that, I can see that the command which I had in the edit, I had um, selected in the edit window gets run in the um, console window. And the assignment has been made to number vectors. So I don't see anything down here, but I do see that the number vector is now showing up in my global environment list. So we can see that in the environment list, it provides us with a little more information than uh, the um, objects that only contained a single thing. So it's telling me that it's a numeric vector. It has index numbers ranging from one to five, and then it shows me the actual values of the numbers that I put into that vector. Since I um, clicked on this line and ran it, our studio has automatically moved the cursor down to this next comment. So these lines that have hash marks in front of them are comments that are not executable. They are simply there to help us understand what's going on. So if I click the run button now, it'll automatically skip over the comment and execute the next line that is executable. So let's do that. And now it is created uh, down in the console window, the animal vector. And I can see by looking up in the environment pane that um, it's a vector that has four items in it and they are listed. It is a character vector because it contains character strings. Python has a shorthand sy syntax for referring <clears throat> to a sequence of numbers. So rather than writing out three comma four comma five, et cetera, I can simply say three colon nine, and that indicates the sequence of integer numbers from three to nine. And I can take that sequence of numbers and assign it to an, a named object, just like I did when I explicitly listed the numbers in the sequence. The sequences can go up 
they can also go down. So if I have the sequence going from 10 to zero, it'll be 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And it is also possible for the sequences to go into negative numbers just by simplifying a negative end to the sequence. As a practical matter, there really isn't any difference between a sequence that I've specified in this way. It is essentially a vector. So um, I am making an assignment to a, an object that we would call a vector object by basically putting a vector into it. If you are a Python user, you should take note that the sequences in R do include the last number, unlike Python where the sequence goes up to but not including the last number. So let's go ahead back to the script and try this. Let's try creating a vector that counts down. And here we see, um, or sorry, that counts up, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Here's the one that counts down, goes 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, dot, dot, dot. And here's the one with negative numbers. It goes from the top number all the way down to the negative number. So one thing you should notice is that when I define the range of numbers, this is telling me the, the range that the sequence of numbers will range through. When I put a range of numbers in the square brackets, that's not indicating that the numbers in the sequence are uh, the numbers one through 11. It's indicating that the index of the numbers ranges from one through 11. So as we already saw, if we want to know about the vector, we can look in the environment data pane in the upper right. We can also just type the name of the vector and hit enter and we can display it in the console in the lower left. There are two functions that we can use to actually ask about the vectors. We can ask what the length of the vector is, that's the number of items in the sequence using the length function. And the mode function will tell us the type of the vector that is in, uh, the type of the data that is in the vector, for example, if it's numeric or if it's character data. So to demonstrate what we just saw, if I want to actually list the items that are in a vector, I can simply write the name of it here and hit enter and it displays it in the console. I can also um, use these functions. The length function tells me that there are four items in the animal vector. And if I do the mode function, it tells me that the animal vector is composed of characters, which is something that I also could see up here in the environment pane. Anytime you have a one dimensional or more data structure, we need to know how to reference the different items that are in the sequence of uh, objects inside that complex object. <clears throat> so in R, we can talk about the items that are in a vector by referring to their index number. So if I want to talk about the third item in the animal vector, I just put a three inside square brackets. So remember that in R, uh, numbering is uh, one base, not zero base. So the third item is going to have this uh, number, index number three. I can also use this indexing to assign a value to a particular item. So in this case, if I want to change the value of the second item in the vector to arachnid, I just use the assign operator like I do before, but um, specify what mm. the item is that I want to um, put that value into. We can refer to a range of items by simply putting a range of indices inside the square brackets. So uh, if I say 2 colon 4, that means items 2 comma 3 comma 4. So I could actually define a vector which has the range of numbers from 2 to 4 
and then put that named vector inside the square brackets and it would do the same thing. So this range that I put in here is itself actually a vector. So if I run this part of the script, here it is showing me what animal vector item number three is, worm. And if I look at my list of values, I can see the third item is worm. If I want to change the second item, which is currently spider, into arachnid, I can just use this assignment statement here. And I can see if I look at the environment that the second item did indeed change from spider into arachnid. If I want to see items two through four, I can use this syntax and it shows me that the second through fourth item are arachnid, worm, and bee, which is correct. In earlier parts of the lesson, we assigned single objects into a named object or variable, and we were treating it as if it were a special kind of thing, a variable that would just hold one thing. But actually, those named objects into which we put a single thing are actually just a special kind of vector. If we assign a single, uh, data item, it's a vector which simply has a length of one. And we can show this by assigning a single value into a named object and then ask how long the object is and it'll tell us. We can also, instead of referring to it simply by its name, uh, in this case an item, we can say an item number one and we should get the same result. So let's go ahead and try this. So here we're going to assign a single character string into a named object called an item. And here we see an item with this value here. But if we ask how long it is in the way that we ask how long vectors are, we will see that we are told it is one item long. And now if we reference it and ask for item number one, we get the value of the vector. So even though the way that this is displayed makes it look like single item objects are something special, they're really just another form of vector that have, happens to have one thing in it.